Hello, my friends. This is Bal Kadmon, and here's another drive-by podcast. I'm really enjoying creating these videos in response to questions. I feel it can truly inform others as well. So, the other day I uh, was uh, presented a question about the Coptic language. The person saw that I was able to read Greek from my previous podcast and was wondering what I knew about Coptic and whether I could read it. Well, yes, I can read Coptic, but it is significantly more difficult. <laughs> uh, Greek already is very com complicated, but Coptic is, is a new level. I won't go in depth as to what Coptic is. Uh, it's a very broad topic, but um, I can just tell you quickly that it is uh, this language incorporates a later stage ancient Egyptian language and even some early stages. Uh, written in a Greek alphabet, and they added a few letters here and there. It's it's a pretty ancient ancient language. Today, it is mostly used liturgically, and being a language that incorporates ancient Egyptian, it would be logical that we could ascertain ancient Egyptian within a Coptic text. Today, I'm going to read a verse from the Gnostic Gospel of Saint Thomas. This is a gospel found in Egypt in a place called Nag Hammadi in 1945. It is one of the most popular of the Gnostic Gospels because of its wonderful message. It is truly a shame it was not included in the canon, but I understand why they wouldn't. I mean, it's, it's just amazing. It, it blows the canonical Gospels away. In looking over the Coptic version of St. Thomas, I was looking for a word that would be a throwback to the ancient Egyptian language. Luckily, the very first verse contains an example. Let me read the text and then give you the English translation, and then I'll point out the Egyptian word. I think you'll find this very interesting. Nai ne en sage etep enta iisus et ong jo awa af skechu Enki didimus iudas Thomas awa pejaf je pe tahe etermenea eneisage fna jitipe an epmu. Yeah, that uh, that was not that easy. I had to do about two or three takes because some of the letters there that you see are not conventional Greek. Some of them are sort of Byzantine-ish, <laughs> and so. Uh, yeah, so it took about two or three takes for that, but uh, I can read it as you can see, and and uh, I would like to read more, but it would actually take a little bit longer because I need to, you know, really sit with it. Anyway, that verse in English is, "These are the secret sayings which the living Jesus spoke, and which Didymus Judas Thomas wrote down, and he said." Whoever finds the interpretation of these sayings will not experience death. In the Coptic, it actually says will not taste death, but, you know, whatever, it's the same thing. So, okay, so that was interesting, right? So now let me cover the word there that is from ancient Egyptian. And maybe some of you would have already caught it when I was reading it. But let's look at this again. I'm going to read the first sentence, or rather the first section of this verse, and highlight the word in question. Nai ne en sage etep enta iisus et onch. In English, these are the secret teachings which the living Jesus spoke. Okay, why is this important? Do you know the Egyptian symbol for life. Here it is right here. What is it called? Ankh. Just like in the saying. What does that saying say in English? Living. The living Jesus. It's enta Jesus et ankh. Living Jesus spoke. So you can see the letter, the, the rather the word ankh is in the Coptic language, and it means living, just like it does in ancient Egyptian. If you look at the term in Coptic, and there's a few ways to spell these words, uh, because Coptic 
as many different characters and it's there's two types of Coptic. So here's an example of the word to live in Coptic and how is it pronounced? O ang. <laughs> uh, the word or the phrase the eternal life in Coptic is P O ang N N A. Ang is life in Coptic and is the also life in ancient Egyptian language. How cool is that? I mean, there are there is no other language that that contains any Egyptian correlates, ancient Egyptian correlates. Uh, and I hope I hope you this will inspire you to look into it more. Uh, Coptic is. Uh, like I said, it's not really a spoken language. I'm sure some people do, but it's mostly liturgical. You'll find it in Egypt, but you can look online and you'll find, you know, many lessons on Coptic. Um, I would recommend first, if you are going to conquer Coptic, I would first learn Greek. And I would, I would say more like Koine, which is what I was reading the other day, and maybe some Attic Greek. Um, and then try to go into Coptic because uh, the Coptic language is a little bit different. You'll see some similarities, but there's also a lot of difference. So you're, you're almost going to learn a different language. But having a Greek uh, basis is going to help you here. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this. And I do hope that this inspires you to look into Coptic a little bit more in depth. It's a great language and it holds the keys to almost, well, at least many of the Gnostic Gospels and some occult writing as well. And it's just definitely something to look into. Anyway, hope you enjoyed this podcast. I will talk to you soon. So mote it be.